have written testimony, please bring it up. It will get distributed to all the members. We will have it on, on the record. And again, you have till the 28th to submit additional record, uh, written information. My name is Ralph Chapman from Brooksville in Hancock County. I represent House District 37, the only House District in Maine that has had any metal mining in it in the last 95 years. My hometown is the town that has the Callahan Mine, the largest town in my district, the town of Blue Hill, has the Kerr American Mine, formerly known as the Black Hawk Mine. I want to give you just a very brief history of those two mines. I don't want to take a lot of your time. I'd be happy to answer your questions now or at any time. But I, there are a few pieces of information that I think you need to have. Uh, so the first mine to operate was the Callahan Mine, uh, opening in 1968 through 1972. It's an open pit mine. Uh, it's an EPA Superfund site at the present time. A couple of weeks ago, the, the work was completed to remove the acute health hazard on the site, which was a massive contamination of the soils of polychlorinated biphenols or PCBs. Um, and that work was just completed a couple of weeks ago. Almost simultaneously, another report from the research group at Dartmouth uh, was released that discussed uh, some heavy metal contamination studies that they had done in the estuary next to the mine uh, that uh, shows uh, evidence suggesting that there's a, a still an ongoing uh, unknown source of heavy metal contamination into the surface waters uh, in, the, in the area of the mine. Uh, now, uh, I want to make a comment about what the EPA plan is. They just completed this phase one. The next phase is to deal with stabilizing the tailings and putting an impervious cover, uh, water impervious cover over the tailings, uh, and to put some of the waste rock back into the pit. Uh, when that is completed the estimated cost prior to the discovery last year of the PCB widespread contamination, the estimated cost was $23 million. The state of Maine taxpayers are liable for about 10% of that. So Maine taxpayers have been paying about $2.3 million. Uh, when all of that is done, and the estimated time is another five to 10 years, uh, then not a single penny will have been spent to deal with the groundwater contamination and uh, for an obvious reason, which is there is no known technology to do so at the present time. Now the second mine to operate in my district was the uh, Black Hawk Mine, now called the Kerr American Mine in Blue Hill. That started in 1972 and went to 1976. Uh, that was the mine that was estimated to be, uh, had promised to employ two to 300 people for 10 to 20 years, and it, it did uh, about 10% of that. It was the actual employment. Um, I should say, speaking of jobs in the mines, that these mines have created lots of jobs, and, and some of them fairly decent paying jobs. It's just that the jobs came 40 years later in the guise of uh, remediation work to be done on the mines. The jobs at the time were very low paying jobs and of course only temporary. So uh, the Kerr American mine uh, is not uh, on the uh, taxpayer uh, uh, dole at the moment. It's, it's, uh, uh, it was possible to identify a party responsible for it. Uh, and so about uh, half a dozen years ago, uh, when it was found that the, uh, I, I, should, I should back up here for a second. In, after the Callahan mine got started, the legislature decided that we should have a, a reclamation act, something to have uh, mining companies sort of fix up the mine site before they leave it. And so when the, when the Kerm, uh, the Callahan mine was exempted from that, but it, it, for the Blackhawk mine, um, 
a cover was put over the tailings, but it was not uh, engineered in a way which would last. And so when that eroded and it was discovered that five or six tons per year of dissolved heavy metals were leaching from the tailings into the local surface water and biota, uh, a geosynthetic cover was installed about half a dozen years ago at a cost of approximately $10 million. If that geosynthetic cover works, and at last reports I hadn't gotten the data from the DEP monitoring, uh, I, I gather staffing issues have uh, had, the, had the group busy, uh, um, but it, if that cover works, it will require perpetual care to maintain it, that is to say, you know, if you let a tree grow on a spot and the tree roots puncture the geosynthetic cover, that defeats the, the, its purpose. So um, that's the situation with the two mines. Uh, I, I just have a few comments now on the role of your uh, group looking at the proposed regulations. And it would seem to me that it would be worthwhile to ask the hypothetical question of if the proposed regulations were in force at the time that these mines uh, were operated, would the situation be different today? I think that's a worthwhile question as a form of focusing the thinking on how the regulations actually affect what, what happens. So let me indicate what the problems are with the mines, uh, both the Callahan mine and the uh, Kerr American mine. Uh, one, I've mentioned already the acute health hazard from the pollution. Uh, the other is, of course, the chronic health hazard from the uh, uh, heavy metal um, uh, contamination and uh, both surface water and, of course, groundwater. Uh, because of the contamination of the groundwater, uh, that results in a loss of future use. The Callahan mine site, uh, the current owner is trying to give it to the town, but I understand that the area can never be used for residential or commercial purposes. You cannot sink a well into that area ever. So it's, it's forever not developable. Uh, the same is true, of course, of the underground mine in Blue Hill. Uh, you can't sink a well into, uh, into the region that has the underground mine. Um, so that's a loss of future use. Uh, and then I, I mentioned uh, the perpetual care that's required. As I say, at the Callahan mine, the impervious cover has not yet been placed on the tailings. That's part of the next five to 10 year job that the EPA uh, is planning to do. That will require perpetual care as well. And then there's, of course, the cost of the taxpayers. Now, let's focus quickly then on what the regulations before you have to say about these things. Uh, let's deal with the cost of taxpayers first. The dollar value determination for the uh, trust fund is, is uh, ambiguous. It's ambiguous because how do you know what it's going to cost in the future? Uh, how do you estimate what it's going to cost in the future? You heard excellent testimony just before the break detailing the uncertainties of the industry. And so this is a particular problem uh, of uh, trying to determine what dollar value to put into the trust fund. And then the release of funds is uh, up to the department. Now, here's the real problem. The real problem isn't the known pollution. The real problem is what I'll call the delayed pollution. I mentioned the study from Dartmouth that was just released a couple of weeks ago relative to the Callahan mine. That suggests to me the possibility, I, by the way, I, I'm not a mining expert. I, I am one of the few published research scientists in the legislature, and my background is in applied physics, but it's not mining. But I, so I, I don't want to suggest that I'm speaking with authority on, uh, on these uh, mining issues, but I at least raise the question that if, the, if some of the acid mine drainage acid rock drainage uh, is observable only after a period of time, then m saying that everything is okay uh, on one day doesn't mean that uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 years later it's still okay. This is the major problem. It looks as though there is a, uh, a time delay between when 
uh, when you expose this material that's been out of the environment for hundreds of millions of years, and then you expose it to the environment, it may take a little while before it creates the problem that we're trying to avoid. So that means the determination for the cost of the, you know, I don't use the phrase cleanup because I, 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 that, that's not, a, it just, you cannot clean it up. You, you remediate it as best you can. Uh, it's not like a, spilling a, a, a glass of milk on the table and then you get the sponge and, you know, a few minutes later you're basically back to where you were except that you've lost the glass of, you, you've lost the milk. A cleanup with re respect to one of these mines uh, just means putting it into a state in which it's, uh, you know where the pollution is and you're trying to keep it from, uh, from affecting the health of people around it. Uh, so uh, I want to mention one other issue dealing with the Kerr American mine because it's an issue that is not discussed in your regulations, proposed regulations, and has been discussed uh, almost uh, not at all uh, before the Committee of Jurisdiction in the legislature, and that has to do with selling liabilities. Uh, the Kerr American mine liability was sold to a liability management company. Now, if that is how the industry works, has worked, or is intending to work, then your regulations don't pertain to how the sold liabilities are going to be assessed by uh, the department as to whether the liability management company is capable uh, has the assets, the resources, and so forth to, uh, to manage those liabilities. So that's an issue that uh, is, is, of course, missing. Now, uh, just a couple very other brief comments. Um, the concept that the 1991 regulations was what kept the lack of mines in the last 20 years has to be looked in the con historical context. There was a 50-year period from 1918 to 1968 in which there were no metal mines in Maine and there were no regulations. And so to su suggest that a 20-year period of no mines was due to the 1991 regulations is uh, perhaps uh, inaccurate. Um, and finally, the population of Aroostook County uh, peaked in 1940, the, the region, uh, some, several earlier uh, people testifying uh, made reference to that and has been in decline for the last uh, uh, 60, 70 years. The population in my district peaked in 1880 and fell continuously until 1960. It was an 80-year period of declining population. My district, although reasonably average state in terms of the state, in terms of its economy at the present time, uh, was an um, a economically depressed area. The people in my district welcomed with open arms the announcement of the opening of the mine on account of the jobs it was going to create. Uh, if you graph the population as a function of time for those two regions of the state, they have a, a, a surprisingly similar shape, just offset by uh, uh, 60 years. So uh, I, I want to bring that to your attention, that I, I, I feel for the needs of the people in uh, Aroostook County for economic development. Um, uh, and I uh, think that uh, as a final comment, I'd like to second very heartily all of the comments that were made by the speaker just before the break, uh, Lindsay uh, Bowker, who had uh, um, presented a basic concept that this is a time to do it right and get the best information you can, uh, make that available to yourselves. Uh, because to do any less is going, likely to be a disaster. I would not like to see another Callahan mine or Black Hawk or American mine in the state of Maine. Thank you.